boys and girls, Pastor Ryan and Miss Hannah here. Welcome back to Kids Church. We are continuing our series from the amazing Pastor Rodney and Pastor Brittany, our September series called Block Party. Everyone's invited a series on something that is my favorite, friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others that you care. Speaking of friendship, Miss Hannah, I actually got you something because I really care. <gasps> What'd you get me? I got you this Christmas ornament. Why'd you get me a Christmas ornament? Because Isn't your that favorite Christmas? color is red. And it has sparkles. Wait, my favorite color is purple. Why'd you get red? Uh, anyway, bo boys and girls, I think we should play a game, right? I think should, we should, should play we, should a game. game. What game should we play? <gasps> I think we should play Do You Know Me? Do You Know Me? <gasps> Do you know me? So this is how you play. How do we play? You got to get a brother or sister, mom or dad. Or pet rabbit. Okay, you could do that too. And it's a test of how well you know each other. Miss Hannah, do you still know me even though I don't have a beard? Yes, I still know that you're my husband. You still know me? Yes, okay. I do. Just making sure. So you have to ask a series of questions mm. to each other and see who gets the most answers right. All right, so you go first. Okay. Do you know me? Do you know my middle name? Yeah, it's Grace. That's right. Do you know my middle name? Yes, it's Michael. Oh, so that's your turn. I can't copy. Don't copy. I won't copy. Okay, turn. okay. I'll be unique. Do you know my favorite dinner? Your favorite dinner? Uh, chicken parm? No, it's your favorite <laughs> dinner. Oh, what is it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm so, I was it's a little pressure on the spot. Okay. Do you know who my best friend was on July 1st, 2001? What? I think you would know that. If you really know me, my best friend on July 1st, 2001. 2001. Yeah. What do you think? Your brother? No, my imaginary friend Bernard. What the? And he, gosh, I thought you knew me. Okay. Right, I'll do a couple more. I definitely did not know that about you. Okay, um, do you know my feet or my shoe size? Your shoe size is a seven. It's a six and a half. You tricked me. Ah! Do you know my favorite? color? I would say sky blue. Sky blue? You said that before. Yeah, I like I like more like a royal blue, like this type of blue. Ew! Sky, royal ew! Blue. That's, that's what I like. Ew. Oh. <laughs> Alright, should we, should we keep going? Uh, I think we're good. I think they get the you point. sky blue? You said sky blue <laughs> never said, I think the harbor logo is, uh, is more of the blue I like. That's what sky blue! Okay. You what? just said royal blue. Those are different blues. Okay. Anyway, I think we should do worship, right? Let's do it. Let's jump up and worship God. Sometimes it's hard to know what the day is gonna bring. Some days you feel like you can fly. Days we have broken wings, but with you by my side, I'll always be okay. You always shine color, even on a cloudy day. Sometimes we face trouble.
Great worship, everybody. Who's ready for a Bible story? Me! Put that away already! I am ready though. Okay, today's Bible story is about an epic friendship. Really? It takes place in 1 Samuel chapter 20. It's about me and Bernard? That friendship? It's pretty similar. All right, let's check, check it, out? it out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18, through 20. Now imagine for a moment that you're a prince. It's a pretty cool job. Your father, King Saul, is a fierce and handsome warrior with a hot temper. Away from me, you fools. Saul is the first ever king over the land of Israel. And since you're his son, most people expect you to be the next king. You'll live in a fine palace, wear royal robes, and carry the best weapons. Your name is Jonathan. Call me John. You got a great life, right? But then your dad hires a new guy, a young man your age named David, who's only a shepherd boy. But somehow, through the power of God, David has just defeated the giant Goliath, saving God's people in the battle against the Philistines. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Your dad has given David a place to stay in the palace in a high ranking army. You and David even become friends. Now imagine, and David fights in every battle and wins. The people of Israel are even more impressed with him than they are with King Saul. King Saul is like great. Yeah, but have you seen David? He is like awesome sauce. To top it off, you've heard rumors that David has actually been chosen by God to be the next king of Israel instead of you. It would be so tempting to be jealous of David, to not talk to him or hang out with him. But that's not who Jonathan was. It's not what Jonathan did. In 1 Samuel, we discovered that instead of being jealous, Jonathan chose to share the best of what he had with his friend. Here, take my robe. Then people will see how important you are. Are you sure? Take my belt too, and my sword. But these are all things for a prince. You're worth it. Thank you, friend. King Saul, on the other hand, did become jealous. So jealous that he hurled a spear at David. And later on, he told Jonathan and all of his servants to kill David. Jonathan was horrified. He quickly warned his friend. Find a place to hide. I'll talk to my father and find out what's going on. The next morning, Jonathan faced King Saul. Don't harm David. He's helped you. He put his own life in danger to kill Goliath. The Lord used him to win a great battle. Why would you kill him? Okay, fine. I'll show you how awesome sauce I am by not putting David to death. Jonathan and David were relieved. And for a short time, all was well. But then King Saul went back on his word. He tried to kill David again. And when he failed, he sent other men to try to kill David. I haven't done anything to your father. Why is he trying to kill me? He won't do it. He tells me everything and he hasn't said a word about hurting you. That's because he knows we're friends and you would tell me. This is terrible. I'll do anything I can to help. So the two friends made a really complicated plan, like something out of a spy movie. Their top secret plot had David hiding instead of showing up for the feast, while Jonathan made up this story to try to find out how angry his dad was. Now, instead of going outside and talking to David about it, Jonathan chose to shoot arrows close to far like a secret message. In the middle of it all, their friendship stays strong. Whatever happens, please be kind to me. I know the Lord will defeat all your enemies someday, but promise to always be kind to me and to all my family. I promise. Shake. Shake. The two young men made a promise to stay friends no matter what might happen next. Then, it was time to put the plan into action. When Saul discovered that David was missing, he was filled with rage. I knew it! You're on his side! That is so not cool! As long as he's alive, you'll never- 
never be king. Why do you want to put him to death? What has he done? Saul was so angry, he couldn't think clearly. He actually threw a spear at his own son. And Jonathan left immediately. And the next morning, he hurried to the place where David was hiding and sent their top secret arrow code message. When David realized things with the king were not good, the two friends ran to meet up. One last time. I'm so sorry. My father. I know. It's not your fault. Jonathan and David hugged each other and wept. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we promise to be friends. He will be a witness between us and our families forever. There was nothing more to say. David left the city to hide from Saul and Jonathan went home. Now Jonathan could have allowed Saul to kill David and maybe become king himself. But instead, Jonathan trusted God and chose to protect and love his friend. Wow, what an awesome Bible story on friendship. Imagine that you thought you were gonna be the next king, but your best friend actually was going to be the next king. That's like trying out for a school play and wanting the best part, but your friend gets it instead. But you know what? Instead of getting angry and jealous and upset, Jonathan actually supported David and was a good friend for him. He even helped keep him safe. Now that's true friendship right there. So if there's one thing that you remember today, it's that friends love one another. Instead of being angry or jealous, we can choose to love and support and be there for our friends, right? So the big question of the day is how can we be a good friend? That's a great question, Pastor Ryan. We can show our love to one another through our actions. Miss Hannah, actions? So like, I have to give you an action figure to be show my friendship? No, silly not. I do have a couple action figures. Though. No, not action figures. Action? Your actions, what you like do, action. how you treat other action. people. It's your actions, it's your, oh. it's you caring for someone. It's how you talk wait, about Wait, wait, so someone. treating others, like the gift I got you. Look, I still got it for you. <gasps> it's the, yes, giving me is, something that you thought I would like? That That's is a great a, action. So I was being a good friend. You were being a good friend. So your favorite color is red. No, it's still purple, uh, silly. All right, so I think that we should maybe challenge the boys and girls this week to be a good friend and show with your actions. Yes. And what you do. And you know what, boys and girls, every time you show love to one another, you're actually reflecting God's love to your friends and your family. No way, Miss Hannah, you are on to something. <laughs> you mind closing us out in prayer? Not at all. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Father, for um, your love for us, Jesus, how you are a friend to us, God. You are a friend when we feel lonely. You are a friend when we are not being a good friend to you, Jesus, or we're not being a good friend to our friends, Lord. You are still so good to us, God, and your love is still so constant. We just ask, Father, that you would make us more like you today, God, that we would be a good friend to our friends, Jesus, and we would show your love, God, and your life to everyone around us, God. We love you so much. Bless every child watching this video that they would experience you today in a new way. Lord, we love you so much. We ask this in your awesome name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, boys and girls, we miss you so much. We'll see you soon and have a great week back at school. Yes. See you next time. Love you. I am a friend of God.